All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Mark Meunier, and I'm a software ecosystem development manager at Arm. I'm actually based in Waterloo, Canada, in a home office. This is where I, I spend most of my my work time. Uh, my work consists of developing and managing projects uh, with the goal of removing friction for the developer community. So, with Arm's ecosystem enabling unique designs with all the the SIPs out there. Uh, this poses a challenge for the developers that are looking to create portable code. Therefore, uh, creating these, these frameworks and standards together with the ecosystem, that's how ARM helps to align and avoid fragment fragmentation in areas that are really non-differentiator. And that's where I spend my time. So I focus my attention in two areas, both in uh, networking and in security. I sit on the board of directors for two projects. Programs that's uh, been kicked off. So I'm here today because I wanted to bring awareness to an open source project called Parsec. Um, and I manage this project. So I'm hoping that this offers value to the BSD community. What I'm gonna go through today, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about Parsec and why we built this project. I'll explain how it works. Um, it's an evolving project, so I'll go over the status of this project, where it stands today. I'll provide details on how to find us, the project, the community. And then I'll, I'll give a couple examples of integrations that we've done lately to give a, a sense of how this, this project is uh, utilized. So I'll kick it off by just explaining why we started Parsec. Um, so when you think about cloud native development, it's now become the norm for developing applications. It's the case for cloud and it's becoming more and more the case for edge and IoT. And of course, it's, it's clear that there's advantages of cloud native development, simplifies your development flow and accelerates your time to market. Um, the flexibility to develop your applications on your developer machine or in the cloud and then move them to your device means you can start coding right early before you even get the device on your desk. And then you can leverage uh, CI CD and build a test framework to facilitate collaborative development with your peers. Now, when you consider these same tools for edge and IoT, two additional challenges are presented. One, the diversity of devices creates this fragmented ecosystem. The second is that these devices present a larger surface of attack. So they can be physically exposed in the field and that demands an extra level of attention to, uh, to security. And when you think about it, the, the, the common practice these days is to leverage the hardware root of trust in the system to secure your, your base, your, uh, your keys and you know, derive your trust from a, a, a hardware protected environment. And uh, these are these are pretty specific, right? They're, they're specific to the hardware that uh, you're developing for. So we created Parsec because we saw this need, right? To fill this, uh, this layer. So Parsec is a, is a straightforward way to leverage cloud native development practices for edge use while keeping the secrets and keys stored in the specific root of trust. So Parsec is a microservice that provides a common interface for security function on the front interface. And then it deals with the intricacies of various root of trust systems with a set of libraries that are unique to each provider module. So Parsec was built using Rust and it sits in the user space, it doesn't rely on anything specific to Linux and therefore runs on um, the, the BSD you know, operating system. So at this point, you might be thinking, why not use PKCS 11 standard to achieve the common interface? Well, the, the simple reason is that PKCS 11 is a spec, not a reference design. Two systems that support PKCS 11 doesn't guarantee that they can communicate without issues. Like PKCS 11 has been shimmed 
It comes with vendor specific libraries and therefore causes infra issues. We have seen this firsthand with, uh, with AWS IoT where device manufacturers can't assume that the security interface will work out of the box, it has to be tested and debugged. And, and finally, not all devices support PKCS 11, so the market is still fragmented. With Parsec, you get a higher level construct that sits above PKCS 11. It's a microservice that is offered as code. So the interop issues on the client side <clears throat> are continuously tested and maintained. The client interface is offered in various coding languages to simplify consumption. And again, since it's a microservice, it supports more advanced features like brokering access to the root of trust. So allowing application to have their own channel into you know, traditional uh, single tenant root of trust designs. So if you think about a TPM, for instance, right, you've got one uh, access point to that uh, root of trust and uh, Parsec allows you to share that uh, single tenant uh, interface. Now this project is community led and new features are added regularly. Major releases take place twice a year. And it also comes prepackaged in a couple open source uh, Linux distros. So very easy to consume in that space. So by now you probably have an idea of how this project works. The architecture is divided into three blocks. First, the Parsec client interface, which exposes the APIs to the app. That's your starting point. That's what's exposed to the, to the environment. And it's available in a number of languages. The second block is the Parsec service. This is where all the functions are held. This is where the, the, the processing takes place. And then the third block is the back end. And that's an interchangeable block that you would match up with the root of trust in your system. So whether that's a HSM, TPM based device or you know, or others, like it, it's, there's really quite a, a, a range of options here. Now, if you think about what's available today, so Parsec started about two years ago, actually maybe more like three years now. It's been donated to the CNCF two years ago. And since then we've been building out the feature set. So this is the mapping of the various elements that are available. So I'll just go through this very quickly. On the client side, you've got the interfaces that are exposed to the developers. And they've been created by the community as well as ARM in these various languages. So we've got a Rust client, a C client, a Go client, and a Java client. And then we have a, a very handy CLI interface. So you can debug your, your system through that interface. Then the, the client authentication piece that identifies um, what we've validated for application ID constructs to, to allow for this segregation of applications accessing the root of trust in your system. So we've done it with peer credentials and we've demonstrated it with Spiffy as well. The wire transport describes the link between the client interface and the service. Today we use Unix domain sockets well, we envision that there could be a need for transferring information through shared memory or TCP sockets in the future. Uh, something we've talked about, but really haven't done much about it. Uh, in terms of OS support, it uh, works in Linux and a number of, of distros, and we've tried it with a BSD. We, you know, we brought up the service and we were able to verify that it works. So we know that it's available for this community. Uh, it's in yellow because we haven't really done rudiment or very in-depth uh, uh, testing. And of course, Windows is another environment that we're, we're thinking about. And then the API. So when you think about the APIs that are supported in Parsec, the goal is to create an abstraction layer for various routes of trust. Our goal is not to create a replica of all the functions that are supported by these individual root of trust systems. Instead, we're aiming to provide a standard set of functions for cloud native development that maps to these various routes of trust, right? So our goal is to create a, a subset of the, uh, of, the, of the API, make that available, 
make it such that it's portable across all the different routes of trust. So this is why you only see a few of these functions, which are really the basic functions needed when you're you know, trying to connect to a remote system, you want to get IDs, you want to protect keys, those functions are there. And there's a few others that we're thinking about adding as well. The yellow ones are, I think they're pretty much done. They're just not yet in the latest release. And then backend providers. So what root of trust have we validated with this interface? So we, we validated with TPM 2.0, both firmware-based as well as hardware-based implementations. Um, so there's a number of devices that support that standard. Of course, anything that supports PKCS 11, with the caveat that there are a number of shims that we're dealing with and we're, we're hiding that from the developer community that's being dealt with in uh, the Parsec project. Uh, embed TLS is a software-based implementation, really useful for debugging. So what we're seeing is developers are creating their framework in the cloud. They're leveraging embed TLS as a root of trust simulator or you know emulator. They're running that in the cloud. And then when they move their application to their device, they swap out the, uh, the backend provider and the, uh, the, the, the software interfaces don't change. Everything just works. And then crypto ops lib is another interface that we've supported and we're in the process of you know meshing uh services in trust zone with uh, opti and trusted services into parsec so we've done a demonstration of it and now we're working with the community upstream you know the required bits in that uh, in uh, trusted services to enable that link to parsec Uh, just a quick, you know, glance at who's involved in this project. These are all companies and projects that are working with us that are public, right? That we can that we can showcase. Um, Arm is is still heavily involved in this program. We've got engineers from our research group as well as our uh, open source group that are keeping this project going. So they're really the, the the top maintainers today. But there's a number of maintainers now from the community. And that, that's been going up quite uh, aggressively over the last uh, few months. And, and again, it's a, it's a CNCF project. It's at the sandbox level today, which is still considered experimental. We're expecting to move to the incubation stage by the end of the year. Um, and that would make it a more mature program. We had our 1.0 release earlier this year. And what we've committed to with that release is no more um, no more breaking changes taking place on the API front so that we can guarantee the service going forward uh, with new iterations, which has been the case for a number of, of releases, but now we've, we've cemented that in. Uh, how do you get started? So when you think about it uh, in Linux, all it is is a couple commands to pull down, or I guess there's a, for Fedora and, and, and SUSE, it comes pre-packaged, so you, you can just call it and install it, and it's there, it's going to work. Uh, we've got recipes with the Octo, and then uh, any, any Linux distro that is not these, you know, not based on the Octo or uh, Fedora or SUSE, you can follow the instructions here that, are, uh, that have been recorded. I think Paul Howard did that work. It was pretty straightforward. I imagine the process is very similar with BSD, and this is where I'm really hoping that we can find some uh, some interest in this community and, and test it out. All right, uh, where to find us? So yeah, it's all everything's in GitHub, obviously. That's it's expected. We have a book, very extensive documentation that uh, the team uh, keeps up to date. That's the source of truth. This is where we derive all of our information from. We're available on, on Slack. And there's a Parsec channel. There's there's a hundred engineers there that are um, active and you know supporting the community, exchanging notes. And then we have a website which we try to keep up to date. It's I gotta say it's maybe a little bit uh, falling behind, but it's uh, it's there and, and it's a it's a starting point. It has links to all these different uh, areas. All right, I'm gonna jump into a few implementation examples just to give uh, the community an idea of how Parsec works and where it gets integrated. I'll start with one of the latest ones, which was with AWS Greengrass. So the Greengrass community, if you think about Greengrass 1.0, it supports PKCS 11 as its interface to uh, 
root of trust or for security at the edge when devices connect in. Um, that, that's been problematic, right? So it's this fragmentation and the, the challenges around all the shims and supporting the various implementations of the bottleneck. And it's a deterrent for customers to use proper uh, hardware to protect their keys and their secrets. So with, with Parsec, AWS sees the value of this, um, removing that friction point from their supported green grass uh, ecosystem and their developers or the community to pushing that into this project Parsec and letting Parsec community deal with those, those interops, you know, at lowering the stack and then ensuring a very smooth uh, interface to their customers. So what we're doing is we're working with the OEMs in the market to have Parsec installed in their devices, in their systems, and then their connection points into Greengrass becomes a lot simpler. So the way it would work is they would provision their keys in the device using Parsec, you know, at the build time or when the customer receives the box. And then when it connects to Greengrass, Greengrass will help support the APIs and we'll be able to do the handshake between uh, the Parsec client and uh, the Greengrass service. That handshake uh, is done without the keys ever leaving the root of trust. So we're ensuring that the secrets are protected. And then uh, from there, you can set up your, your communication links um, and that you know, is, is well secured now. And there, there's more to do with this uh, going forward. Like we can expose the Parsec APIs to the applications and they can leverage that interface as well if they want to, you know, do some uh, some cryptographic uh, functions. That's going to come in the future. Um, another example here is just a uh, a network uh, interface service that leverages Parsec to abstract the various roots of trust. So this was a Red Hat who created uh, a Dbus Parsec. And it's to remove that friction point again to the different routes of trust. So they're leveraging Parsec in the network manager. It's a small piece, but I just wanted to show like there's different levels of integration that are taking place. And I mentioned earlier in the presentation um, that we, we can segregate the calls into the route of trust. When you think about what Parsec offers as a service, it doesn't prescribe what the ID mechanism is used for identifying and, and uh, identifying these applications. So we did an integration with Spiffy just to show how this would work. And there's a, there's a good video on uh, the, the Spiffy website. There's one with the Parsec as well that kind of shows this whole process working with, uh, I believe it's a, a TPM uh, root of trust. Something to keep in mind. And then this is like showing the picture of OEMs. Why do they care about Parsec? Well, they're, they're stuck dealing with various routes of trust in their software stack. And with Parsec now, they can really, you know, pull that, that interface into that one project, build it on all of their devices and have only to deal with one, you know, common interface for their customers. It becomes even more interesting if the customers are demanding the languages, you know, to, to be used. Um, if they have to support the various languages that are available in Parsec, then it's another reason why these, these OEMs might want to use Parsec. And oh, one more thing to note here. Um, Parsec is, is architecture agnostic. It runs both on x86 and ARM. This is not just an ARM solution. This is something that these OEMs can leverage for all of their deployments, all of their devices, and it should work the same across the board. So this is getting to the end of my presentation. I have just a, a recap slide here, just to give some context or to lead the audience with this, this, uh, these, these key points. So Parsec really, simplifies security, right? That's the goal of this. It exposes cloud native function applications, focusing on the functions that are most uh, applicable for that use, and then abstracting the root of trust. That enables portability. 
So by leveraging Parsec layer, you're now creating code that can be deployed on any device, making it a lot easier to integrate with CI, CD. It, it accelerates development from that perspective, um, gives you the tools you need to debug and, and work in a cloud environment and then deploy your device. And then because it's a, a microservice, it supports additional functions, allows you to isolate uh, your access to the root trust. And that concludes my presentation. I hope that was very uh, helpful, folks. I believe now we can jump into the Q&A.